Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Most of you probably know that there are a number of different modules in Lightroom Classic. I estimate that most of us probably spend most of our time in the library and develop modules. And some of us have created books and slideshows and used those modules. And if we print at home, we've of course used the print module. But that web module and that map module are rarely used. And from what I could see, most people don't even know what they do. So in today's video, I want to talk about the map module and just show you what it's used for in Lightroom Classic. Now, I have some images down here in the film strip. They were just taken a couple days ago. And I took them with a Nikon Z7 II. Now, theoretically, um, if I'm on an image in the film strip and I go over to the map module, the map module will show you where that image was taken. But for it to do that, the camera you use to take the photograph has to have GPS capabilities. A Nikon Z7 II doesn't have any built-in GPS in it. So none of these images have any GPS coordinates stored in their metadata. So none of them, if I click on them, will show up on this map. Now, of course, if you have a camera, like I have a Nikon Z9, that has built-in GPS. And if I took these images with the Z9, um, just importing them in Lightroom and going over the map module and clicking on an image, they'd show up on the map. But what can you do with non-GPS images such as the, these taken with the Nikon Z7 II? Well, what you could do is you could download an app. Now, all you need is a smartphone, of course, and there's tons of apps out there for both iOS and Android. And download an app. I use this one, Geotag Photos Pro. I'm not affiliated with them. I won't make any money if you use this app and buy it. But this is the app I use on my iPhone. And the way this app works, and the way really all these apps work, is you synchronize the time or the clock on your phone via the app. The app will show you the time and then you synchronize that time with the camera. So your camera and the phone have the exact same time to the second and it's actually very easy to do. Once that's done, you just start a trip with the Geo, in this case, Geotag Photos Pro. You start a trip and then you start walking or driving or whatever you're doing to take your photographs. And what happens is, as you're walking along, the app on your phone is dropping down waypoints of where you're stopping and taking photos. And of course, when you take the photos, your camera is storing the date and time in the metadata. Then what you do is after you're done, you import those images into Lightroom. Then you take the app and you save that file it creates of those waypoints. And it automatically, at least Geotag Photos Pro does, it automatically saves it to my Dropbox account. Then you go into Lightroom, import your images, and then you could go down and go to the map module. And then what you could do is select all of them, click on the first one and hit Command or Control A to select all of them. And then go right here, about down here is the toolbar, this little strip of real estate. If you don't see it there, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key will make that toolbar appear and disappear. Then click right here where this little squiggly line is, and we're gonna load tracking. Then what we're gonna do is right here, it's the Erie Basin Marina. I have two here, as you could see, but I just took these a couple days ago at the Erie Basin Marina, and that's the file for this set of images. And I'm gonna click choose. Now it just loaded them here and it shows my track. This is where I walked uh, when I took these images. Okay, but they're real, they're not saved to the photos yet. To do that, click on this little squiggly line again and then go down to auto tag 25 selected photos. Now if I scroll down a little more you could see you could turn off tracking, but we're going to go to auto tag 25 selected photos and just do that. Then what you'll start to do, or what you'll see, is you'll see numbers appear here in little like bubbles. And if I hover over them, you could see that I took six images right there. You could see here I took four images there. And see the number of images. And then you could click on them, actually click on this, and then go through the images that you took, or I took in this case, at this location. I took an image here. Let's just hover over it. 
it's it's there it is it's the first one in the group so i parked there obviously and i walked here and took this image and i walked over here and took two images and there and so on so now if we look at the metadata you could see that the gps coordinates are put in there as long as as well as the altitude um that you know above sea level of course that i took the photos and that's as easy as that now again if you have a camera with gps built in you're all set you don't have to do anything you should go over to be able to go over to the map module click on an image and it will show you exactly where it is it probably won't have the track like this does but it will have the images there so you'll be able to just hover over each of these bubbles and be able to uh, see what images were taken at that spot or at that location. Now, if you don't have the app and you just have images, you actually could go to the map and manually on the map um, just go to that location. Let's say it's here. And let's say this image didn't have GPS coordinates on it. I could just take it and drag it onto the net map and drop it on the map. And then the GPS coordinates of where I drop it will get loaded in the metadata, and then that photo will show up on the maps. So you can do it manually, but it's a lot easier using an app such as this app. So that's it. That's all really the map module does. It shows you on a map where your images were taken. Now in the future, I'll do a video on the web module because that's the other module that is um, not used much, and a lot of people don't even know what you could do with the web module. So again, in my next video, I'll talk about that or in a future video, I'll talk about that. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.